I feel like for Clint, there's almost like a parallel, right? Because you weren't sure about doing media. And yeah. I think for you, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think it was like a lack of trust almost. Like, these guys haven't always represented me well. I don't know if I, if I want to be team media. Did you feel like that to some extent? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, I, I think that's probably why we, we maybe, you know, get along a bit. But I, I, I feel like there's similar parallels. Like, we played with a chip on our shoulder a bit. You know, I, I came into the, the U.S. soccer scene. I wasn't... I wasn't somebody that was necessarily being groomed to be the star of the team, nor do I think U.S. soccer really wanted me to be the star of the team. I think that they pretty much probably wanted to see others rise, um, but I was just so unconventional in what I did. You know, I, I brought my authentic self from start to finish. I was, you know, did it in my way. I was unconventional in the way I trained and the way I approached my career. The way I took care of myself, I did things differently, I did fitness differently. So I did everything different from the team, but you know, I wanted to win. That's, you, that's why I was there. When you say you don't think US soccer wanted you to be the star. Wait, can I just clarify? Who do we mean when we say US soccer? Like we mean That's a who? federation, the head coach. But either yeah. way, when did it click for you that you feel that's how you feel? I mean, I felt slighted and everything. I mean, I didn't have a, I wasn't with the agency that was sort of coupled with U.S. soccer where majority of the players played um, with that, you know, ha had those agents representing them. That matches? Of course. Deals, sponsorships, every bit of it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just think, you know, U.S. soccer, they, they like people that maybe just conform to the way that they want someone to represent them. And, and what I was, does that mean? What is that way that they want to be represented? Ah, and I mean, how didn't you fit that? Like a bit of a puppet, I guess you could say. You know, somebody that just comes and goes about their business. And so they, they essentially, I feel like they groom players coming in to be the stars. And then when someone else comes in, it's you know, it, it, it's sort of a resistance of what, what can we do? Can we not publicize this player as much or give them enough attention? I mean, I felt like that throughout my entire career. Like it was so hard, you know, for 10 years of my career, no sponsorships, like barely anything, no opportunities, grinding away, you know, figuring out what, what do I have to do to to have the world understand what I'm about or see the, the type of player I am. and. I mean, I had to score a hat trick in a World Cup final. You know, people were like, oh, where'd this player come from? I'm like, I'd been there for I'll 10 years. <laughs> I've, I've been, been scoring game winning goals in, you know, Algarve Cups and Olympics and all this stuff. But that's just the way the world works as far as showcasing players. You know, they're not always highlighting the, the best players. They're some, oftentimes highlighting the most marketable players to sell jerseys, to sell this, to sell that. Can you relate yeah, to that? Yeah, I mean, I deal with what, what, what she's saying 100%. I felt like I wasn't part of the Bradenton Academy, so you can't show, like, look, this is a product that we're creating, and these are, these are the players that should be. I'm the person that fell through the cracks, shouldn't have made it, you know, still was going the college route because that, that, that's all I knew. And then the way that I played, the way that I acted, I wasn't like your poster child of who they wanted to be the, the main guy. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, similar to Carly, all I wanted to do was win, be the best that I could, um, have the longest career as I could have, make the most money that I, I could to take care of my family. And that's, that's how I felt. I felt I was not the, not the person ever that they really wanted to be the, the main guy or the, the main person. But, but you taking that approach, like you deciding I want to do things my way. Was that more so a reaction to all that or is that stuff that you were already doing? This was already like who you are, you, you train your way, you do things your way and then it just kind of worked or was it more reactionary to now being a part of U.S. soccer and being a part of the national team and seeing that environment and saying okay well that doesn't really fit me, I'm going to do it this way. No, I, I came in straight away. Like I experimented, you know, I, I lifted weights but then I started to feel slow and sluggish and so then I stop doing that and kind of explain to the sports science people that, hey, lifting weights doesn't make me feel great. I'm gonna focus more on body weight stuff. But it was always deemed as me trying to be difficult and me wanting to do my own thing. So it turned into this thing where I, I didn't have, there was no margin in, of error for me in my career at all. 
Like some other players got a le long leash of they could go in a, a goal scoring drought for X amount of weeks and it, it not be a problem. For me, if I was going to do it my way and do it the unconventional way and, and do things differently, I couldn't, I couldn't mess up. I couldn't slip up at all. I guess what's weird for me is that from the outside looking in, I've just always considered you one of the faces of, of US soccer, right? And so to hear that you didn't feel like you were chosen by them to represent you, did that, did that change at a point when, when you're leading them to wins in a Women's World Cup? Does that switch or did you continue to feel that way the rest of your career? I think I forced it. When I first got on the team, I mean, I, I scored the winning goal in 2008 Olympic final. Scored the two winning, you know, winning goal in 2012 Olympic final. Um, the, the only two goals in that final. But after that, all you ever heard of were everybody else aside from me. Several other, you know, key players. Um, you'd see billboards, you'd see interviews, sponsorship, like none of that was going to me. So then we get to 2015 and, you know, we won that World Cup because of some yellow card suspensions. That was the only reason I was pushed into a more of attacking role. I had the freedom to, to play the way that I play and I scored three goals in a World Cup final. And so I forced them. Like I went against everything that, uh, you know, I, I think that they essentially you know, we're, we're having all these other stars. I mean, they groom stars and they, and they build stars before they're even born. That's, that's just what they do. I mean, they're doing it now, you know, Pulsic. You know, he, the poor guy's playing with so much pressure because he's being thrown into this as like having to be the face of US soccer. Mallory Swanson, you know, she was the next big thing coming in and it's all this pressure, it's all this attention. Um, but, you know, I look back and I'm thankful because having that, like having to prove myself, having to have that chip on, on my shoulder and the media, the fans, um, it, it allowed me to have the career that I had. Do you, do you have, looking back now, now that you've had a chance to kind of like step away from it, look at your career and then look at the current state of like US soccer and everything from a, from a different perspective and standpoint, you have any regrets about anything? No, I don't really have any regrets. I don't have any regrets of how I approached my career. Um, I took the long game approach and it was the most rewarding way to navigate through my career because the day that I walked off that field representing the US national team, it was the greatest feeling in the world because I stuck it to everybody. Like nobody thought <laughs> that I was gonna do what I did. I didn't even think I was gonna do what I did. But uh, you know, everybody that was rooting against me, everybody that wanted to see me fail, I had the last, I had the last laugh.